I'm here with Brandon Seifert at Collector's Corner for our Halloween signing. Uh, he's the current uh, writer behind Witch Doctor and Hellraiser The Road Below. So Brandon, how did you get started in the industry? Um, I always wanted to write comics. And in 2007, I met Lucas Kettner, who uh, was a freelance illustrator at the time in Portland, Oregon, where I live. Uh, and he turned out to want to draw comics, and we ended up deciding that we were going to do basically a short portfolio piece, uh, just to try to get some other work in comics. And the thing that we came up with for that portfolio piece was the first Witch Doctor story. And once we started working on that, we realized it had some legs, and that would be silly for not if we didn't pursue it. So rather than just using it as a portfolio piece, we started shopping around to different publishers. And eventually, Robert Kirkman and Image Comics saw it and offered us a deal. We took it, and uh, that was more or less uh, that was more or less that for me. Witch Doctor is your own uh, creator-owned comic. How many more Witch Doctor stories do you have to tell? So I did some math for that this summer. Uh, I went through my master list of Witch Doctor story ideas that I have, and I picked out just my favorite ones, uh, and then I calculated how long, you know, how, how many years of stories that we would have for Witch Doctor if we did it as a monthly ongoing series, just using my favorite stories. And if we just did my favorite stories and it was a monthly ongoing, it would go for three years. So it's, I have like 36 favorites and a whole bunch of others that didn't make the list. So it, it could potentially go on indefinitely. So you've got a lot of Witch Doctor stories to work on. Uh, what other projects are you currently working on other than Witch Doctor? Uh, you mentioned uh, Hellraiser The Road Below. Uh, the first issue comes out uh, November 7th. Uh, that's a four-issue miniseries published by Boom Studios. I'm also doing two issues of the Doctor Who comic from IDW. Uh, starting, it's uh, going to be issues three and four. I believe they're starting in December. Uh, and then I have a new two-parter that just started. Uh, it's a digital exclusive. It's called Spirit of the Law. That's through Monkey Brain Comics and Comicsology. Uh, the first issue came out on Halloween, and the second issue is going to come out two weeks after Halloween. I think, uh, I think two Wednesdays after. Uh, then beyond that, that's all the stuff I can talk about. But I've got some other stuff that hasn't been announced yet. Okay, great. You, thank you so much, Brandon. We're more than happy to have you at Collector's Hor Corner. We hope you have a great time in Baltimore. Thank you. I appreciate it. I was just wondering, for the deep okay. ones, why didn't you use the blobfish or any of the other awesome deep sea creatures that exist for the evil deep um, So the deep ones are like a, a thing out of Lovecraft, and he described them as like kind of a cross between fish and frogs. Um, and I kind of wanted to throw in like a creature from the Black Lagoon thing. Um, so it was like it, it was kind of a combination of influences. Um, Hellboy had already really iconically done frog creatures involved in a Lovecraftian apocalypse, so I cut that element out in my notes that I gave to Lucas about it and just suggest we go with fish, uh, and specifically deep sea fish, um, because the deep ones are supposed to live at the bottom of the ocean. Um, the specific deep sea fish that Lucas chose was an angler fish, so it's sort of like an angler fish person creature from a black woman kind of thing. Um, my preference would have been for a viper fish, but I suggested viper fish, he went with angler fish somehow. So, you know, sometimes that's how it works. I just wanted to know what your inspiration for Penny Dreadful was. I don't know if there's really a who specifically. Um, I had this kind of monster girl in my head initially that ended up being completely different from the direction we went with Penny. Uh, Penny was honestly one of the hardest parts of Witch Doctor for me and Lucas to figure out. Um, we did, like I said, initially in this in the Witch Doctor stories that we were self-publishing, we went in a completely different direction, much more of like a goth, almost kind of like a goth cheerleader nurse thing, which really didn't work out and people really didn't understand. So um, we tried to think more in terms of you know what would you know Doctor one of Doctor Morrow's patients look like. And base her more off that, and then that kind of suggested like the, you know, the Japanese ghost in like the the dress and the long black hair, um, and so we incorporated uh, an element of that too. Uh, was there any Sherlock Holmes um, inspiration with Doctor Morrow Not and consciously, the consciously, I think it's really difficult to avoid that uh, when you have, um, well, when you've got a character who's very very intelligent and whose job is, you know, solving mysteries or diagnosing or deducing things. Um, I think 
uh, that uh, the Sherlock Holmes, Dr. Sherlock Watson relationship is kind of like an archetypal thing for that. Uh, and it's kind of it's kind of hard to get away from. Um, there are certainly some elements that Morrow and especially Eric Gast have in common that are very similar to stuff from the old Sherlock Holmes stuff that was not intentional on my part. Uh, both John Watson and Eric Gast have served time in Afghanistan for one. Oh yeah, yeah. Did not that did not occur to me. Dead baby. Dead baby who? Uh, it's a dead baby Jake. So hey. What was your favorite dead baby joke? I don't know that I actually have one. Um, there's something I enjoy in kind of an abstract uh, sense, but when people, you know, when people ask me to tell jokes, I can never think of any actual jokes. Uh, the dead baby jokes that were in the issue that have the dead baby jokes were the things that I just made up and were things that didn't really have a punchline. They were just supposed to, you know, it was Dr. Morrow trying to get under his assistant's skin and just making up random stuff. So I think the specific joke was uh, a rabbi, the Pope, and a dead baby walk into a bar. And if uh, Eric had said, oh yeah, and then what happens? It would have totally shut Morrow down because he didn't have any, you know, he, neither he nor I had any idea where that joke uh, was. Going. I was just wondering if the medical terms that you used for the different demon infestations are actual terms that you got from demonology. And if they are not, what system did you use to come up with the They are not the actual terms. They are based on Latin. Um, uh, Diablosis is based on uh, Diablo, which is a, a prefix meaning um, demon or evil or stuff like that in Latin. And osis, which is a suffix meaning disease. Um, so parasitic diablosis. Oh, I was kind of inspired by the technical term for being infected by parasitic fly larva, which is one of those words that I've read plenty, and I don't think I've ever said it out loud. I think it's myasis, but I could be completely wrong.